and good morning everybody. So what we've got today or this morning for one of our first jobs is a Mazda and I believe it's a Mazda 6, which it is. A um, couple of warning lights, engine management light on the dash, but the main concern is the electronic parking brake light. So that's got a fault and it's showing the amber warning light on the dash. So that's what we've been called out today for. However, um, it failed its MOT on the parking brake light, but the engine management light's on just now. So we're going to check if the engine management lights just came on as an effect of the, you know, the parking brake issue. Sometimes you can kind of go in sequence with. Uh, so if you've got a a warning light on a Ford, sometimes it will bring on ABS lights, airbag lights, and all that sort of stuff. So it might just be that that's the case but we'll get the top done plugged into it and we'll see you then. So these are the warning lights that we're getting. The amber parking brake warning light, engine management light and at the minute we've got a flashing red electronic parking brake warning. So I'm just going to stay out here. I might even plug in the Phoenix Plus because I hate sitting in cars that are covered in dog cares. It's quite, um, it's not my style, let's just say. So we're going to Mazda. Click OK. So we'll just do a high speed scan and let it run through all the modules of the car fairly quickly. So we're going to the EBP, the electronic parking brake, and you can see, hopefully, without the glare is we've got a fault C2005, C112A, actuator disengage and right actuator. So that would be the offside rear caliper and the top message that we've got there is likely to be an effect of that fault code C2005. So what we're going to do next is have a wee look on live data and see if there's anything obvious there and then we'll focus on that offside rear caliper. So I'll just show you that here, obviously the glare's really bad now but um, you can see that we've got electronic parking brake actuator position left, that's a bit better, electronic parking brake actuator position left is applied so the near side rear caliper is working, um, the electronic parking brake actuator position right is released. So that tells me that we either aren't getting any sort of command to actuate that caliper or we've got a faulty caliper. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go over to the offside rear and we'll see if there's anything obvious at that caliper. So about half an hour has passed, I ended up getting talking to the customer. Um, so basically just to cut a wee bit of time here, what I've ended up doing is probably something you shouldn't do, but I'm going to do it anyway, is we're just going to try and actuate the caliper itself. Now, we're going to do this from the interior. So what happens is the the wiring harness from the caliper runs up in behind to almost more or less the near side, uh, sorry, offside rear tail light. Uh, so the harness goes into there and then joins to a four pin plug. So we can test it directly to there. If nothing happens, then we can go directly down to the caliper and then we can confirm if we've got an open circuit or a faulty caliper. This is just to save time and just for quickness. So let's get this done. So our connection in there is made. So once we supply 12 volts, we should be able to hear the caliper moving. Obviously you might not hear it because of the mic. So if I put that there, there is absolutely nothing. No motion at all when we supply power from that point. So I don't know if you will be able to see this, but we've got our connections made directly up at the caliper. Now this isn't a how-to, this is just the way I'm testing it. If you in the comments, don't like that way, when that's your problem. So what we'll do is we will connect this back up. And what I'll do is I'll move the mic closer and hopefully we'll be able to hear. 
the actuator on the caliper move. So if you heard that on the video, hopefully it captured it. Um, that basically means that we've got a good caliper, but the wiring from that plug to the actual caliper itself, there's somewhere along that line, it's open circuit. So we'll just get all of this stuff packed away. Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, we might have one after this, uh, not too sure what it'll be, but if there is, then we'll see you there. So this Ford Ranger needed a high-end scan tool just to change this bulb. If you want to find out why, keep watching. Welcome back guys. So it is a different day and we are on a Ford Ranger. Now we've made a video about this before but that was when we had very little subscribers or followers so we're going to show you again. So this is a Ford Ranger 2017 and two front headlights are out so we're going to try and reset both headlights and see how we got on with that but we'll show you how we do it and um, we've had this on quite a few Ford Rangers now sometimes they work sometimes they don't sometimes you need to get a new body control module which this one it might be the case because the two headlights are out the last time on this one of the headlights shorted out and it only blew one side so we were able to reset that but unfortunately two headlights are out on this so we don't know if it's going to be a fix today so let's see how we go on and oh, I'll show you what I mean so if we turn the headlights on you can see there's nothing nothing either side is working so we'll switch them back off, turn the heating off, uh, however you do it, yep. and we'll see if the Phoenix X-Link can do it, we know the Phoenix Plus can do it, but our subscriptions ran out on that, so we won't be allowed to have online access, so let's see if the Phoenix X-Link will be able to do this. So we're just going to do a high speed scan and see what fault codes we've got logged in the BCM. You can see we've got four fault codes in the BCM at the moment. So let's see what they are. So we've got a battery voltage circuit, left low beam, right low beam. Sorry, both left. And you can see this is a fault code that we're interested in here. Is a U100. Solid state drive protection enabled. Driver disabled. So that was a fault code that came up the last time as well as the, the low beam issues. So what we'll do is we'll go into the BCM and there should be a special function. So you can see here, low beam, FET, counter reset. Now don't quote me on this but I'm pretty sure FET means field effect transistor or field emitter transistor, I cannot remember. But you can always Google it. But what we're going to do is we're going to reset that and hopefully this will bring back our low beam uh, headlights. It'll bring them back to working order at least because this is due an MOT in a month. So we want to try and get this done. If it doesn't work, then you know we're going to be looking at a, a BCM. So we need to try and get this reset. So let's try it. So we're going to click low beam FET counter reset. We'll click OK. Hopefully the X-Link doesn't let us down on this. So you can see operation in progress, please wait. The operation has been successful. We will switch the ignition off. And then we'll go back. It's going to read fault codes again. So we've still got a fault code here, we'll clear them, see if they'll clear. So they have cleared. Now we'll try it. So if we go into 
Low beam. And we're on to a winner, guys. Look at that. So that is on low beam now. This side is still out. So it might just be that that side needs a bulb. But we will check that. Just to be 100%. But that side is now back working. So we've got a plug off and we're just going to plug in a, a new bulb just to see if this will help. So what I'll we'll do is I'll go inside, switch the headlight on and see if the low beam works. So hopefully you could see that. Try and get a bit of brightness in here. So hopefully you can see that. So that bulb, uh, the original bulb that was in it is shorted out and caused that left low beam to go down. Something's happened to the right side, whether that bulb's went as well, I don't know, because the customer changed the right hand bulb. But both bulbs are working. The fault codes, I think, are away. So if we go into I'll just spin these around, just so you can see this here. So if we go into the main screen here, go into read DTCs, you can see our fault codes are away. And if I turn on the low beam, you can see it lights up. So we're on to a winner. So if you are struggling, with a fault with one of these Ford Rangers. You can't really do it yourself. You're going to need someone that's got a tool to actually plug it in and a, a decent one that's able to go online because this function isn't available offline. Um, that's the same on the Phoenix Plus as well. You need to have online access to do this reset. Um, well, that's what I've found anyway. I don't know about any other tools out there, but Top Dawn does require online. So. That's that. Hope you've enjoyed that one. A bit different. Um, low beam headlight just shows you how you can't fix it yourself just by changing a bulb on these. Sometimes you might get lucky doing a battery reset, but with that um, that fault code for the solid state driver enabled, you'll never get rid of that just by you know lifting the battery posts off and doing a, a reset, a drain on it. That's just not going to happen. You need the scan tool. You need to perform the function on it to get the low beams back working the way they should effectively so what we'll do is we'll move on to the next one uh, we're not quite sure what that's going to be yet because it might be a day ahead we don't know but we'll see you then